What's the word, y'all? The NBA offseason is officially here. Outside of drafting, trading, summer league, uh, the offseason is a very weird spot for me because I slowly lose my mind day in and day out. Three different things are, are very, very normal for every single offseason for the past five years of my life. The first one, like I said, I'm going mentally insane because the next meaningful plays of NBA basketball is, what, four months from now? Like, I, that is a very long time. So I'm going a little bit insane. The second thing is I start to overthink everything I know about basketball, which is is never a good thing majority of this video is revolving around me overthinking something that doesn't need to be overthought but i'm doing it welcome to the kenny for real channel and then the last thing that the offseason brings me is me going to youtube and typing in nba full game because i need my fix and i'll be looking for the most random game don't give me game seven in the nba finals i understand the stakes now give me some random regular season game in january that do not matter and i watched a couple of those one of them being a, actually a random regular season game in april 20 uh, no 2011 april it was between the chicago bulls and i'll be honest with you i was looking to watch some mvp derrick rose a high definition so mvp derrick rose versus orlando and i'm like this is david versus goliath you got mvp derrick rose you got a uh, dwight Pow dwight Powell, she's dwight howard who was in his prime at this moment i click on this video and find out dwight howard was injured for it so i thought to myself would this game still be worth watching and it was it was only a three-point game and when you go back and watch a game from 11 years ago 10 years ago you forget about some people and forget about how good they really were. Ryan Anderson had a little stretch, but bro was a hooper hooper. Um, Jason Richardson, dog. Jameer Nelson, one-time All-Star, dog. And then they had people coming off the bench like um, um, Earl Clark, whose name I haven't heard in like a couple years. So I'm telling you, if you need a fix, type in NBA full game and just just use the mouse wheel and go towards the bottom and find a game that you want to know existed and you're gonna have a lot of fun all right so um to the, the catalyst for today's video like I said is me overthinking um say it's Father's Day and you know people see me and they know what I do we talk to family members we talk to friends and then the first thing they usually do is talk about basketball which makes sense that's that's the one if you don't know anything about Kenny you know what his job is you know that he talks basketball so let me spark up a conversation about basketball even if I'm not a huge basketball fan and somebody um asked me Stephen Curry, pretty good, right? I'm like, yeah, man, this is great. You know, first finals MVP. Bro asked me, so what does that have him ranked? If he knew what he was doing to my brain, <laughs> if he knew what he was about to make, he made me overthink for like four hours straight trying to figure out wh where does this put Steph Curry? This is not anything new. Um, we even talked about it for our, on our podcast for a little bit, and it seems like every other podcast and every writer out there is writing about Steph Curry, and after this, this previous championship, where does that put him all time? And you know me. If Actually, if you can go through the history of this channel, there's probably four different videos from four different seasons, four different years where I put my opinion on blast about ranking players. And what I will say is every single season, I believe something different. At the beginning, I hated the idea of ranking players. I'm like, why do we need to compare these all-time greats? Can we just accept that they're both great? And I think you can accept that they're both great while also saying this player had a better career or this player was a better basketball player. And that's kind of where I am right now. I'm, I don't mind ranking players as long as the person you are ranking it to or the people you are ranking it to realize that it's your own personal subjective opinion, you know, that won't go over the top and get too upset about you ranking. If you can have a community that doesn't really care and just want to hear you talk hoops, beautiful. Anyway, um, candidly speaking, before this NBA championship, I think I had, and I don't have my own personal uh, Kenny for reals, top 100 players of all time, but I believe that I had Steph Curry in the range of like 13 through 20, let's just say. And does this get Steph Curry to a top 10 player of all time is the real question. So bro asked me this at the cookout, and I, I think to just kind of get away from it so I can think, I said, hey, he's he top 10 now without even really thinking about it. My, my initial reaction was Steph Curry is a top 10 player of all time. And nobody can argue, I mean, you can argue that he's not, but you can't say that I'm completely bugging. You can't say that, that I'm living on Mars or something because the resume speaks for itself. We have four championships, two of two unanimous MVPs, a finals MVP, and the all-time greatest shooter in the history of basketball. A guy that has changed the way the game has been playing currently and for the future. That sounds like somebody that's top 10. It's not that easy to say he is top 10 because, well, somebody has to fall out. And the real question is, who do you put Steph Curry against to drop them out if you're putting Steph Curry in? And then when I start thinking about that, that made me think even more and, and this is the number one thing in my list or not list i made i made notes ladies and gentlemen i was at the i was at the cookout i want i want lollygag you know talking to family and friends anymore i was solely thinking about making this video to talk about hoops with y'all what makes something like this impossible let, let's take two players that 
that are at least in the realm of top 10 in most people's eyes. Let's take Bill Russell. Let's take Stephen Curry. It is, for me, Kenny Beecham, almost impossible to rank one player over the other. And here's why. If we strictly go in on talent, undoubtedly, it is Stephen Curry. I was watching a video by a YouTuber. His name is HoopVision68. Shout out to him. He doesn't upload a ton, but when he does upload, it's very high quality content. So like I said, the name of the video is I watch an NBA game from every decade. Go check it out. Uh, hopefully, I'll remember to put the link in the description. He decided to talk about this narrative that is in the, in the 60s, nobody can dribble the ball. So he decided to sit there and count every single ball that was dribbled in the first quarter. In the 1963 NBA Finals, there was 180 dribbles of the ball. Only 22% of them was with the left hand. 22%. 22% of dribbles were with the left hand, y'all. So obviously, the skill level is on a whole nother level in today's game because we have players that can dribble with more than one hand. And if you want to see the comparison, this is what it looks like in, in 2022. It's almost a 50-50 split because people understand that I need to be able to dribble with both hands in order to be successful in today's game. We're also we're also talking about an error that the jump shot basically wasn't even invented yet. So how can I compare Bill Russell versus Stephen Curry? Now you might look at that and say, oh, Stephen Curry deserved to be over him just off that alone. But I don't think that's necessarily true because the impact that Bill Russell had in the time was legendary and this is my this is my alternative to just ranking nba players and this is what kenny beecham is going to do i am going to be ranking nba players based on the error that they performed in so bill i don't have the errors labeled out just yet you know what i'm saying like i said i only been thinking about this for a couple hours and yes this is way more work but you know who i am bro i uploaded over 50 youtube videos a month work is what i do um but like putting nba players versus the people in their own era because that's where their competition was. So undoubtedly, Bill Russell's like the greatest player of the 1960s, as he should be. He dominated this era. But I can't just say, oh, if he played in 2022, he wouldn't be able to dominate. When in reality, when we're talking about the upper echelon of athlete, I, I'm a firm believer that majority of these athletes can dominate in any different era because they'd be able to adapt their game, adapt their game to whatever was working at the time. It's unfair to Steph to compare him and Bill Russell's rings, but it's unfair to Bill to compare him and Steph Curry's talent. It was just completely two different things. The only thing that's similar between 19... 63 and 2022 basketball is the objective is to put the ball in the circle and prevent the other team from doing the same everything else about the game is completely different I also realize that it's probably not a, is it a cylinder is it a circle you understand what I'm saying score the ball prevent the other team from scoring everything else is completely different from the way it's officiated to the way the game is played the hook shot was the greatest thing of all time how many hook shots do you see in NBA basketball today it's less than 1% of shots, and back then it was like 70% of shots. You know, this is a different game, so it's hard for me to compare these different players. But if somebody asked me on the street, is Steph Curry top 10? I'll probably say yes. And then if they ask me the next question, who's your near top 10? That's why I draw the line, because are we being serious right now? Are you being serious? Um, either way, that's that's just the only thing that's been on my mind right now. Um, and I guess the, the next part of this is trying to figure out what errors are. How do we determine an error? Are error, errors, damn, that's going to be so hard to say because we have errors, errors. Are errors decided by the style of play? I think style of play might be the easiest way to determine an error. You got the jump shot era is what we would currently be in with Steph Curry dominating. The previous era, can't even say the mid-range era because... 90s kind of see that as well or should it be labeled by who was dominating in that era you know what i'm saying should it be the bill russell era should it be the michael jordan era you know what i'm saying should it just be named after whoever the top dog was of that that time how do we then what do we cut it off when that player is no longer number one i don't know again i'm overthinking all of these things and yes one thing that did come into my mind can a person rank across multiple eras absolutely a person can rank across multiple eras because i would i would argue that we are currently in an era shift we're, we're leaving the last era and we're going into this next one where, where players are coming in at 19 years old regularly and immediately jumping into keys keys to the team and turning into dominant nba players earlier than they've ever been so we'll have a guy like lebron james who absolutely dominated whatever his era was 
but he's still ranking his current era because even though he's 37 years old, he's still one of the best players in the league. So I do believe, I think that can show the longevity of NBA player and the all-time greatness if you can rank across multiple eras. I don't know. I'm just, again, I'm just thinking aloud and it's just fun. So is Steph Curry top 10 of all time? Sure. Yeah. That, so be it. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll go with a yes on that. Who you knocking out? Don't ask me, my boy. My, you ask me my top 10, I'm giving you 15 different names because that's my pool. Um, But I do believe that ranking across errors would be super fun, even just for a project for me. I, I'm not trying to convince you to do the same thing. Again, this is just me talking. Um, But I think that's something I might do. It, I won't go all the way back to the 60s, though. I'm going to take someone else's word on who was dominating the 60s and say you did it. Uh, but like once we get to, I don't know, mid 80s until now, I think I could do that research. I could do that research. Uh, but let me let me know what you think about all these things, man. Where do you personally rank Steph Curry if it is that easy for you? How do you compare him to Bill Russell? What if you do have one list and you're confident and in, in, in your list? How did you compare Bill to Steph Curry or Steph Curry to Will Chamberlain? That's another player that was dominating and that was way early on. And actually, Will Chamberlain got better counting stats than Bill, even though he ain't got the same amount of rings. So how did you compare? How do you personally compare the current era NBA players versus the previous eras? And is it that easy? And why is it so easy? I'll see you tomorrow.